how would you measure success? And I know that that, that may be contextual. Maybe not. It is. It is for me. It is very contextual. And in the classroom, I consider successes when I reached a student that had not been reached uh, before. And I can I have memories of of those. And, and lack of success or failure is when uh, we departed our relationship and I had not affected their lives. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and in many cases, um, I can honestly look back and say I, there were kids, youngsters, uh, learners that I did not reach. And that bothers me still, uh, that we weren't able to work that out. But all, as I move through the career, success has been defined. And, and right now, um, success for me is that, that we begin to report in very positive ways uh, results for student learning in this country. Uh, it is such an important factor for the lives of those youngsters, more so than it has been in our history. And if we don't reach every one of these students, if we don't set high standards for learning, and some folks, when they hear this conversation about setting college and career ready standards, they say, well, are you being unfair to students? You're pushing them beyond where they are. Um, it, the, the ultimate failure of us, all of us in this, is that we put a student through an education process and they're not prepared to, to face life. Mm -hmm. And so for me, success right now is all those youngsters getting to a point where they can take that next step in life in a successful way, that they, they, they are successful in college, they do begin a career pathway of success, that they begin to interact with folks in society in a way that they're a contributing citizen. Those are the ultimate success factors. Well, that's a long way from those day-to-day -day successes. So you have to back away from that. And, and for me, in many ways, there are smaller successes that sort of lead to that larger success. Uh, having strong leaders in the class, in the, in the buildings, those principals are so important to the learning process. They have the hardest job in education today. And uh, supporting them and providing resources around them in a way that's positive and giving them the kind of training and support structure is, is important. Um, having teachers who have the competence and the, and the passion we're working with students uh, and having systems wrapped around students that are more supportive than uh, than many of those students have in their personal lives. Those are the short-term indicators and I think for me stepping back and asking the question where are the leverage points? Uh, those determine the kind of areas where I begin to determine successes and failures and where I spend my energy. Uh, One of the biggest things that you were involved with um, uh, when you were part of the Council of uh, Chief State uh, School Officers was the the new standards. Yes, you were instrumental in that, and it's been a yeah. um, you know it's been all kind. I mean, it's been all over the news for years mm -hmm. now. It's been it controversial. It has. Um, they've been reevaluated in some states mm -hmm. and improved upon. Um, as you look back now at that, you know, a few years later, mm -hmm. um, would you have done things differently? Probably done some things differently. I would not have backed away from the the ultimate goal that we had established. I I landed at the council of having been a commissioner in two states, and I would say, and most recently in Kentucky, I'd spent ten years in that state. And we, in earnest, had attempted to set standards for learning, and in all honesty. When I read those standards, they were so broad mm -hmm. uh, that if I were a teacher in a classroom, I wouldn't be able to see where the emphasis is. And teachers, in earnest, were trying to cover all those things that we were saying were important uh, in a discipline. But uh, in that attempt, they were covering too much and weren't going deeply into this so that students could develop understanding. Uh, I had experienced, as a commissioner, standards that were not coherent, didn't seem to flow from prerequisite knowledge to mm -hmm. knowledge later on. I, I experienced standards that were poorly worded, but it wasn't because we were attempting to set low standards or broad standards or weak standards. It was that we just didn't have the expertise to do that as a state education agency. And I'd seen other states, uh, other commissioners trying to do the same thing. But then also I saw in other states very, very weak standards. Um, you could literally go from one state to another and be redefined in terms of your proficiency levels in learning. So when I approached that agency, I came there with this frustration. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt like it wasn't the responsibility of the federal government to solve this problem. There have been some attempts. The uh, first Bush administration had attempted to do some work on this. Clinton's goals through thousands. Uh, so there had been 
attempts to and frustration, the business community was expressing frustration. But I felt like the right people to do this were the state commissioners of education. And so I still believe today that that's something we should have taken on. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I do believe that we did a good job. Uh, clearly those uh, standards that we established uh, collectively uh, were much better than standards that existed before. Now, um, the frustrations in this whole process were not about the development process of those standards. I was frankly very surprised that so many states wanted to do this work. But uh, the, the real issues around the struggle were the outreach to the community, helping people understand why it's important to set these standards of success, how it's important to the students, but to this country in this global world. Uh, and uh, we now have, I think, a much better condition in this country. But it's the engagement of the federal government and all of that led to resistance. We've had a number of states question. The end result for me is that we now are a standards-based country. We have much better and realistic and higher standards for our students. They're much more coherent. We have teachers who like them. We need to support those teachers. And I think the success or failure of any work like this, and it was huge and it was massive uh, national effort on the part of states, worthwhile, still a lot of issues that need to be resolved if we're going to be successful in implementation. So it sounds like the foundation has been set and, yeah. and you certainly believe that there's, there's room for, for growth. Yeah. for you know um, analysis of what's been done up to this point yeah. and improvement and those standards are uh, who knows uh, what kind of revisions need to be made but those revisions ought to be made by thoughtful researchers sure. who are looking at how they're being implemented where the successes are in the field uh, and we need tools that support teachers in this process uh, mm -hmm. because you cannot implement these new standards uh, whether they be the common core standards or whether they be uh, other college and career ready standards in a state we shouldn't back away from that commitment to, the, to these high standards. And you can't do this without uh, affecting the materials that teachers have to support the work in the classroom, without redesigning professional growth and development, without supporting building level leaders in that, in that quest of supporting teacher growth and development. Uh, so there, there are a number of areas where this country is going to have to put resources more effectively and in, in, in wiser ways than we have in the past in order to be successful. As you look at your career, and, and you've, been, you've been active for, for quite a while in, in, in a variety of roles, you know, and, and this topic today is about your legacy. What, how do you want to be remembered mm -hmm. in education? I guess it gets back to sort of the personal level. I, I, I hope people look at uh, Gene Wilhoyt as a person who was anchored in a desire to affect in a positive way the learning of children in this country. And that beyond that sort of uh, passion for learning, uh, applied himself to that and attempted to work with others in honest and open ways uh, to, uh, to reach this goal. Uh, holding on to those values and not equivocating on this, uh, this quest for a better future for our country and for our kids but being willing to be a partner with folks as we get it done. If you were uh, standing before a room full of teachers, principals, uh, district superintendents, state superintendents, um, what advice or words of encouragement would you give them? Mm. You know, we're in difficult times. Yeah. Education is, yeah. you know, being talked about extensively. Yeah. There are elections coming up, yeah. you know, and education is a major component of that. Um, it's, I think it's tough to it be is, an educator. It is tough tougher than it has ever been. And in many cases, uh, teachers are, uh, are, are accused of being the, the responsible agent for the, uh, what people call the decline of education. And it's not really a decline. It's, we're living in a world where there's dramatic change. And it's not just in education. It's, a, it's occurring across this world. And keep in perspective that, that this, is, this is a major point in history where we're making these kinds of transitions. It's going to require more of us. I would never say to a teacher or an ed, uh, minister today that life is going to be easier. I think you've got to assume that it's going to be complex, it's going to be difficult. But the engagement of an adult in this process of trying to figure out ways to educate children who are going to be our next generation is the most worthy enterprise that one could be engaged in. There's not something in the society that I think is more important. So first I would say to them, uh, you're doing the right work 
for this country and for those kids. But uh, we're going to go. We're going to go through changes. Uh, what these kids are going to have to do is is greater and and loftier than what we had to do. And in order to do that, we're going to have to look differently at the world. Be open to these ideas. Be open to change. Apply yourself very directly uh, to the enterprise. But keep the faith. Well, Gene, it's been a pleasure having you on. My pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much. And um, I do hope that you'll be able to come back again. I'd like like to do that. Enjoy it. And thank you for joining us on this edition of ICF Insights.